Chapter 1, Part 2 The Associationists Many sciences have roots in philosophy, and many learning theories have roots in empiricism, the idea that knowledge comes from experience, and associationism, the idea that knowledge is formed by making connections. Before we begin, take a minute or two to try out this demonstration of free association. Take a piece of paper and a pencil and write down the numbers 1 to 12 in a column down the left side of the paper. Pause the video here if you need some time to do this. In a moment, a numbered list of 12 words will appear one at a time. As each word appears, write down the first one or two words that come to mind. Ready? Now, look over your answers and try to develop some rules that describe how you came up with your answers. Again, pause the video here if you need some time to do this. The Greek philosopher Aristotle is widely acknowledged as the first associationist. He believed that knowledge is gained from senses and reason. Specifically, that knowledge is generated by observing the world systematically and then applying reason to what you have observed. There are three key Aristotelian principles of association. The first principle is contiguity. The closer together in time or space that two stimuli or sensations are, the more likely it is that thinking of one will lead to thinking of the other. For example, hearing the word dog might elicit an image of your dogs. Contiguity can be spatial, as in chair and table, coffee and cup. It can be temporal, as in lightning and thunder, or coffee and oatmeal. Or it could be some combination of those, as in bread and butter. The second principle of association is similarity. Sensing or thinking of one specific st stimulus elicits similar recollections. For example, the sight or sound of one dog elicits the memory of other dogs. This also applies to more general or more specific associations. Cognitive scientists make the di a distinction between thinking dog and then thinking golden retriever a uh, general to specific association versus thinking dog and then thinking mammal, a specific to general association, but Aristotle didn't make that distinction. Aristotle's third key principle of association was contrast. A stimulus also elicits opposite recollections. For example, up might make you think down, day and night, maybe boy and girl, to use the example we've been using. Uh, sometimes people will say cat is the opposite of dog. Did you come up with any of these principles during the free association exercise? Much later, in the 19th century, British associationists like John Locke and John Stuart Mill consolidated associationism into a theory of all knowledge. They were empiricists, meaning they believed all knowledge is acquired through experience. One important idea for the British associationists was Locke's idea of the newborn child as tabula rasa or blank slate. Locke contended 
that if knowledge only comes from experience, then any human without experience, that is, any newborn baby, has the capacity to become anything, a violin prodigy, a Nobel Prize winning physicist, or a criminal. And it's the experiences they have, no matter what they were born with, that make that possible. So empiricism is the idea that knowledge comes from experience. The opposite of empiricism is nativism, typified by Immanuel Kant. Nativism is the idea that some ideas are innate. They do not depend on prior experience. People sometimes talk about naturals, right? He's a natural artist. She's a natural leader. Those are nativist sentiments. Another important idea for the British Associationists was that complex ideas are formed by contiguity. When two or more simple associations are presented together repeatedly, a complex idea is the result. For example, uh, Mill suggested that you might learn the association between the visual sensation red and the word red, and also learn the association between the visual, visual sensation rectangular and the word rectangular. One combination of those ideas is the complex idea brick. Then you might take multiple complex ideas, for example, brick and mortar, glass and wood, and combine them into an even more complex idea like wall or window. And then those ideas might combine into a more complex idea like house and so forth. And there are some obvious problems with this as a theory of all knowledge, but there are also many circumstances when this approach, that is teach the simplest components first, then work on combining those components is effective. For example, if you want to learn to play ice hockey, number one, uh, don't talk to me, I don't know how to play ice hockey, but if you do, start by learning to skate forward, skate backwards, pass the puck, etc., and then you would work on putting those components together. British associationist Thomas Brown attempted to improve on Aristotle's principles of association by adding to them. He added the principle of frequency, that the more frequently sensations co-occur, the stronger the association between them, and the principle of recency. The more recently two sensations co-occurred, the stronger their association. Although Aristotle and the British associationists were all empiricists, none of them ever conducted experiments or collected data to support their ideas about learning. The first conditioning and learning experiments were conducted in the, 19, in the 1880s by Her, Herman Ebbinghaus, and they're the subject of the next video. These slides were created by James E. Mazur to accompany the eighth edition of Mazur Learning and Behavior 2017. They were adapted by me, Liz Kayanka, in 2020 for Cal State East Bay's Psychology 310 Conditioning and Learning.